What's going on guys? Cam here from Edmonds Woodshop. Today we're going to go over general setup for your Omtec Polar along with running some sample test cuts at the end of the video. Now keep in mind that my setup in terms of ventilation may be slightly different from your setup. I'll be running my duct directly out of the garage door just for sake of simplicity of this video. But for your setup, you'll probably be running it out a window or whatever, but just keep in mind of the requirements that you may need for your specific situation. So let's go ahead and get started and get this set up. In this video, I will be using the inline fan, the five inch to six inch adapter, this five inch duct that goes in the back of the polar, the adjust adjustment rings to tighten anything up, screwdriver, USB that will connect to the laptop or desktop computer, whatever you're using, and also connects to the polar itself. So just a quick tip, the adapter that goes on the inline fan can be warped, making it hard to fit on. So if you have a heat gun or some sort of other heating element, you can heat the outside of the adapter and it allows it to flex enough to where it fits nice and snug onto the inline fan. Being mindful to the direction of airflow, I'm installing the five inch duct adapter to the inline fan. Grab an adjustment clamp and one end of your five inch duct and go ahead and slide it over the rear ventilation port, making sure that you tighten down that clamp enough so it doesn't slide off. And then grabbing the opposite end of that five inch duct, making sure there's an adjustment clamp on there first, slide it over the adapter side on the inline fan Again, ensuring that that clamp is tight enough to where it's not gonna slide off. Then plug in your USB cable to your laser and to your computer. So this part's important. This is called your remote interlock connector and it's found inside your toolbox. It gets plugged in here and serves as a secondary key that allows your laser to fire. This silver knob is called our beam attenuator and controls the milliamp output of our laser. It needs to be turned to the right as far as possible. And then go ahead and plug in your power cord and plug in your laser to its power source. Now it's time to flip the switch in the back and turn on our laser. So before we set up our controller and light burn, let's go to ohmtechlaser.com and download the Polar Manual. And to do that, you will go to the Resources tab here, go straight down to Download Center and to User Manuals. Then you'll find the Polar Manual and you'll simply just click on it. And depending on how yours is set up, it may bring it up in the web browser, but um, you might also consider just downloading it straight to your desktop so you have it handy. So now we've opened up Lightburn and we can set up our controller. But before we do that, let's come up here to the top of the toolbar and make sure that our unit of measurement says MM for millimeters. If it says inches, just click on it and change it to millimeters. This just allows us to uh, provide accurate dimensions of our work bed when we go to set up the controller. So now, go to the lower right-hand corner of the screen and click this tab that says Devices. I already have two Ohmtec lasers, an 80-watt and a 30-watt fiber. If you don't have any other lasers, this will be empty. So just go to Find My Laser and click Next, and it will scan for your controller. So here it is. We want the serial USB and just click Add Device. And right here, we can change the name. I'm going to call it Polar. And then just verify that the x-axis is 510 millimeters and the y-axis is 300 millimeters. Click Next. 
Our origin of the laser is where the laser head first moves to when it turns on. So in our case, it's going to be the rear right. If you end up engraving or cutting something and it's coming out mirrored or upside down, then the origin was probably incorrectly selected. So make sure you're picking the rear right. Click Next. Verify everything is correct and hit Finish. And click OK because we can see the polar is set up now. And now if you come down to Devices and just kind of scroll to the right, you'll see this tab next to Auto. It's a drop down. Because I have three devices, I want to pick the polar. Yours will probably say polar right off the bat. And if you look right here where it says laser and then ready, that means that your laser is communicating with the software. So I want to go over some basic functionalities on how to move your laser head. So if you go over to this move tab, click on that, you'll see some directional keys, some up and down arrows, a home button. These are for your left and right movements, your up and down movements, uh, your Z axis up and down, and then your home button is for your sending your laser back to your point of origin. All right, so to set your focal distance offset, you'll want to hit this focus Z button and it sends your laser head back in its fully up position. And when I say fully up, your Z is all the way up. So OMTEC tells us that our distance needs to be 17 millimeters minus the thickness of our workpiece. So in our example, we're going to be using 3 millimeter Baltic birch. And 17 minus 3 is going to be 14 millimeters. So we're going to enter 14 millimeter offset right here at, at the distance tab. And we're going to hit this down arrow key and that will move our z-axis down. So now that establishes your focal distance. So we're going to load a sample file and we're going to use this paw print. And if we go over to the cut layers tab and then double click on the settings here, the window will pop up and we can in input our speed and max and minimum power settings. So I'm just going to leave this where this is at. Since it's three millimeter Baltic birch, it's relatively thin, so easy to cut. So I'm going to use a speed of 30, which should be more than capable for this polar, and then a max power and min power of 60%. Now, I've already done a power line test, which measures the output of the milliamps. So at 60% power, I'm producing 17 milliamps. So that's more than enough. So I'm just going to hit OK. And then once we're ready to go, we can, we can just hit frame. And that will frame around where we're going to cut, just to verify that's where we want it. And then we can hit start. So right here, I want to point out how clean these edges are. No need for masking, nice golden edges. Overall, I'm really happy with this cut. So this is actually six millimeter Baltic birch, and I just wanted to show you guys what the cut quality would look like on a thicker piece. A little bit darker edges, but still golden nonetheless. Surface quality is good and no need for masking. I used a speed of 10 millimeters per second and 61% power. Okay, so now we made our first cut. It turned out great. Now I want to go over just some basic lessons learned now that I've had the polar for a couple weeks. 
and this will help you understand your machine a little bit more and maybe help you get started a little bit faster. The first thing I want to talk about is the power line test. Okay, so every laser, every laser tube, right, has a max milliamp output. That is the power that your laser creates, okay? And so every time you enter a light burn power percentage, say like 40%, it will create a milliamp output, all right? So to determine what sort of milliamp output is being created by the power percentage that you're entering, you have to do what's called a power line test. So you would set up a series of lines in light burn, and each line would have, say, a speed of 50 millimeters per second, but it would have a different power setting. So 40% power, 45, 50, 55, all the way up to 100%, all right? Then you write that power down on a notepad, and then your laser comes with a digital milliamp meter. So when this is firing, it will turn on and it will show a milliamp output. So I went ahead and did this for you and you can compare yours to mine and hopefully it's the same. But when I entered a 40% power and the laser was striking this line, it gave me a 10 milliamp output. So why is this important? Well, my laser tube maxes out at 26 milliamps. So at 90, 90% it 90 power gave me 26 milliamps. 95, it gave me 26, it wouldn't go any higher. So this tells me I never wanna go higher than 90% because I'm overdriving my tube. Now, for longer life, Ohm Tech suggests staying underneath 70% power, which is 20 milliamps. So really, the range that you wanna be working at is 70 and below. I didn't do below 40% power just because it really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, when you're making your cuts, like example, I did the uh, paw print at 60% power, which is 17 milliamps. That's perfect for cutting. And as you saw, I got a nice golden edge. So understanding this will help you determine what kind of power you need to do, not only to maintain the life of your tube, but also be able to effectively cut your designs. Next, you may have noticed that I removed the cover off my laser nozzle. And this is the cover right here, it's just a magnetic cover. The reason why I did that is because I need to be able to verify that the Z-axis has in fact moved according to the offset that I input. This is important when establishing your focal distance and you need to verify if it moved or not. Now obviously with it opened, it's more exposed to dust and uh, debris, so you need to be mindful of the cleanliness of your mirror and your lens. I went over this briefly at the beginning of the video, but you have two very important components here that you need to understand because they allow your laser to actually work. The first is this remote interlock connector. All this is is a secondary key that allows your laser to fire. So it'll frame, it'll move, but it won't fire till this little device is plugged in. You can find this in your toolbox. And it's not like a key, the key to your house. It's more like an aviation style plug where you just simply plug it in and it allows your laser to fire. Next is the beam attenuator. That's that silver dial underneath the nameplate. All this is is a milliamp output dial. So it controls the amount of output that comes out of your laser beam in terms of milliamps. For a starting point, we wanna have it all the way clockwise as far as it will go. And that's when we did our power line test to determine what our max milliamp output was for that tube. So there you go. That was a basic install of your Omtech Polar using Lightburn software. Now, keep in mind that future content will consist of setting up your camera, setting up your rotary, setting up Wi-Fi, and removing the stock fan to reduce the sound of the machine. Now, overall, if you found this video helpful and you wanna follow along for future content, please subscribe to the channel. And as an added bonus, if you liked today's design, 
I have the cat, dog, and angel wing version for free in our Ohm Tech users group. I'll add the link below in the description box, but until then, we'll catch you guys later.